Stay a while and listen. Hello, welcome back to The Freak Show. Bobby McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I continue with my Let's Play of Infinite Adventures. We're going to do things. I don't know what those things are, but we are going to do them. We could be going to the Infinite Labyrinth. We could be going elsewhere. I don't know. I do not know. Did we already go to the keep? I'm sorry, guys. It's been a, a couple days since I got to play last, and I've been looking forward to this, so... I didn't really get to do too much last time I was here, or last time I played. Just a little tiny bit. Um, I'm curious. Do we have... Kessens. Okay, we don't have any of that yet. Codex. Review. Quests and missions. Uh, gesture of affection. Uh, Deeper has asked you to share a note. And we did, and now we get to take the note back to... Or is this one already done? Oh, it's complete. Okay. Just item these. All right. Well, we'll just keep looking around the town, and then we'll eventually leave the house of the mother. We talked to you already. Through tavern quest board. People from all over post quests on the board. If you are looking for adventure, then it's a great place to start. Indeed, friend. Indeed, it is. All right, let's check it out real quick. I think we're getting ready to leave and start our adventure in earnest. So the Giamata Keep, and I think this is where we needed to go. The Great Hall and missions and such. Okay, I have so. no time for small talk. If you have pressing affairs to discuss, you can speak to Chancellor Kalmir. You're so kind, thank you. Alright, missions. Adventuring permit. Find a sponsor so you can obtain an adventuring permit. Alright, I guess we're going to start this mission. Lady Miriam tells me that you and your guild wish to explore the labyrinth. Lord Lucius has told me your story. And I find it hard to believe that it was you who discovered that cursed labyrinth. Well... If I were you, I would be wary of boasting such a claim. Some believe the one who brought us the maze should be banished from Trinity. You're probably not wrong. Lord Lucius is not lord of this castle. Duke Horus is lord, and he requires all guilds who venture beyond the first station of the labyrinth to first obtain an adventuring permit. Okay. The permit process ensures that those who explore the depths of the labyrinth do not hold ill will against House Giamata. To obtain a permit, you must find and obtain a sponsor that sits on the Duke's Council. Sounds doable. The sponsor will vouch for your honor. Return to me when you have found support, and I will issue you a permit. Okay. What about you, man? Would you, would you, uh... Would you be my friend? I have served as Chancellor of House Giamata since the War of Ascension. Tread carefully in these lands. I have eyes everywhere. I don't think you're supposed to tell us that. I think that kind of undermines your own... It's fine. As you exit the keep, wondering where to find a sponsor, you are approached by a young noble woman. You must be the Traveler. I'm Lady Jenica Dune. I overheard what the Chancellor told you. I'm cousin Lady Miriam, and she fancies you, she so I will help. Thank you. Go talk to Archbishop Demaria Dune. She is my cousin as well. She's a bastard, like me, but she is the Duke's bastard daughter. If you win her favor, then I'm sure you will get the papers you require. Okay, where is she? Archbishop. Lady Jenica curtsies and then quickly walks back into the keep. House of the, Mother? the Infinite Labyrinth is a dangerous place. Oh, yeah, that's right. I've seen hundreds of adventurers charge into the labyrinth, searching for glory. If you want my support, then you gotta prove your strength and resourcefulness. Okay, that's fair. Take this dark stone. It's a mundane rock that reacts to the magical anomalies within the labyrinth. There are many strange devices in the depths. Four of these devices are spread across the first station. Okay. Touch the dark stone against them all, and I will vouch for you with my father. Sounds easy enough. All right, I think we're ready to get out of here, and probably we have no equipment. And we're going to die. Um, uh, oh, oh, okay. Player stats, description of what the attribute boosts. Okay, boasts, whatever. Uh, it should be boasts, I think, but maybe not. Uh, strength, attack power when using blades, axes, staves, spears, ancestral greatswords, or when unarmed. That's weird, ancestral greatswords, fine. Physical defense, attack power when using ancestral greatswords. Cool. 
Or physical defense, rather, uh, and attack power. Uh, evade, crit rate, attack power when using blades, bows, pistols, turn, order, and combat. Agility, okay, it's like initiative, alright. Magic power, attack power when using wands. Magic defense, magic resistance, attack power when using arquebuses and uh, pistols. This information we reviewed, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's more stuff here. Equipping items. Uh, melee weapons. Weapons available depends on your class. Offhand melee weapons. Some classes can equip shields or dual wield. Ranged weapon. When weapons available, or weapons available depending on your class. Offhand, same thing. Uh, armor, physical defense can be light, medium, or heavy. Headgear, light, medium, or heavy. Oh, headgear increases magic defense. Okay, interesting. And each player can equip two accessories that can boost a variety of stats or invoke powerful, unique effects. All right, that's cool. So we already are, we are already equipped with stuff. Okay, what about me, Lord Burton? Uh, what, short sword. Okay, and what about offhand? A short sword. All right. Okay, if we're all geared up and ready to go, let's let's get to it. Let's go to the Infinite Labyrinth, the Corpus Causeway. It is time, ladies and gents, back, or to, not back to town, but station one. Let's step in and begin our adventure in earnest. I don't know how things are going to go. We very well could die. But I'm hoping that's not the case. Alright, information for your current traveling party can be found at the bottom of the screen while you are exploring. The minimap shows your immediate surroundings. The map will automatically fill in as you explore the labyrinth. The circle around the mini-map will turn from blue to orange color as you approach a random encounter. The, fu the full map button displays a map of the current level. The map is filled automatically as you explore. Makes sense. The party menu button brings up info about if your If we stick together, team. we can overcome any challenges. I agree. You can equip new items and learn new skills here as well. The exploration menu button will... Uh, it allows quick access to spells and items and the ability to change the encounter rate. Huh. The encounter rate can be changed at any time. On higher difficulties, you can't turn encounters completely off. I mean, I, I think I'm fine with normal. Consumable items will show up in this list here. You can quickly heal your party and then get back to exploring. Healing spells and other spells can be used out of combat will appear here. Picture shows the caster of the spell. Okay. That's a chest. Yeah, let's open the chest. What's in it? What's in it? 150 denarii. What? Hello. This Hi. is Lady Seraphine, the guild dungeon Hi. master. What's I can up? use my magic to communicate with you while you were in the labyrinth. Convenient. Okay. You want to say more? No? Yes? No? Knock, knock. What is our current whatever rate? What is it? Tab? Aha, encounter. Oh, we're on normal. Okay, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be on normal. What's that? Decipher. You touch the dark stone to the ancient device and it glows momentarily. Three devices remain. Sweet. 225. Ooh. Magic wall. Magical Ooh. glyphs indicate a wall that you can pass through. The better your search abilities, the greater chance you have of finding these magic walls. I like it. I like magic walls. All right, open door. Oh, oh gosh, harvest points. You can acquire materials at mining, hunting, and gathering points. Each harvest point has a common and a rare material that can be acquired. The higher your mine, hunt, and gather, sorry, and gather exploration skills the better chance you will have of finding materials. You can only use a harvest point once for every trip into the labyrinth. Returning to the town refreshes all harvest points throughout the labyrinth. Warning, enemies will sometimes attack you while you're using a harvest point. Cool. Everything dies. Nothing matters. Who cares what happens? Boy, you're just a bundle of joy. Thank you for your super positive outlook on life. Um, I'm a hunt. Found a feral bat times one. What does that mean? I'll try it again. Oh, it's exhaust. Oh, yeah, yeah, only one use. I knew that. Ooh. Be careful. Yeah. These guys are tough. No, they're not. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. 
Using Kessens. Kessens are powerful team actions and summons. Performing Kessens requires empower, a shared resource that is gained whenever dealing or receiving a damage. Uh, team actions are either offensive or defensive. They can be learned by visiting Sir Dakarai at the training hall. Summons allow astral beings to project themselves into your reality, invoking a variety of powerful effects. Okay. Note, summons grow in strength as the main character levels up. Okay, can we cast in anything up? Oh, empowering skills. You can spend one level of the empower meter to perform an empowered version of any skill. Pressing the empower button when selecting a skill will you, or to use will toggle empowering that skill. Empowered skills deal more damage, heal more life, have longer buff durations, or improve the success rate of debuffs associated with that skill. Empowered skills gain first strike. They will always execute ahead of other actions. Empower has been reserved for Kessens or empowered skills. Lights up purple. Okay, well we can't do any Kessens now, at least I don't think so. Triple Tetra Gamaton. Summons Tiberius the, the Valorous, Guardian of Souls. Sounds so cool. Do we have a full engage uh, thing? Oh, okay. Okay. Let's, uh, oh. Good, this is going to explain how the, the combat thing works, because I had no idea, so this should help out quite a bit. Uh, when targeting a basic attack, you can cycle between available weapon styles. This is an effective way to make sure that you use the right weapon for the range of the enemy that you are attacking. Enemies are arranged in a front and back row configuration. Players are also arranged in that kind of formation. The first three players in your party are in the front row, the last three are in the back. All weapons have a range. When attacking out of range, the target reticle will tint red to indicate the attack is out of range. Attacks made out of range only deal 50% damage. Okay, so... I'm, I'm assuming they mean when, when they say tint red. I think it's the... Oh, the targeting reticle. How did I not read that right? It's fine. Okay, so the outline. So the reticle itself goes red, but the inside doesn't. And it's a small... Okay, okay. I got it. I got it. I know what's going on. So this one's fine. Um, I can change stance this way. Now what does the center thing being red mean? Is that like the easier time we have to hit it? So I think I'm gonna go with uh, the, the axe. And then this is me. I'm gonna dual wield up on this fool. And then I think we're going to have you also dual wield up on this fool. And then you guys are all going to focus on this dude. Huh, I don't think I can have you in this position because you have no additional attacking. I may have to move you. Okay. Oh, dang. Oh, jeez. Um, do we know who goes in what order when? Uh, because our gal on the right is almost dead, so that's not great. Water of Revive South. Oh, I get to choose? Okay. I think he went first, so I'm gonna have him try that again. I think I'm just gonna have her defend. Oh, we took two Thank out. You. He did not go first at all. Thank you. Alright, I think we just go all out attack on this guy. Now, again, he doesn't seem to have an additional weapon. He's using a wand, but a wand you would think would be... Hold on. Does he have a skill or something that he can do? doesn't. Like, I don't... Oh, I could swap him. No. My turn. Oh? Yep. What was that? Why'd I, why'd I say my turn? Oh, huh? You're welcome. The mendicant, he is the healer. So, I mean, I guess it's fine that he's not doing that. 
Mara's a soul caller, but none of them seem to have any skills yet. So at this point, we're medium weak. That's fine. We're, we're kind of learning. We're getting through here. We're, we're doing stuff. We're handling business. It's fine. Alright, what do we got? Oh, there's a chest over there. Um, I'm very curious as to whether we can cast like spells or like anything. We have a skill tree. Oh, okay. Well, this might have been useful. I should have maybe done this beforehand. Skill trees. Each class has three skill trees. Players gain one skill point per level. Oh, maybe they have to level up. I don't know if they have or not. We'll see. Skills, skill points can be used to level up existing skills or to learn new ones. As you level up skills, you will unlock additional skills. Ho or hover over a locked skill to see the requirements to unlock it. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with healing arts. Increase the magic power of heal spells. Medicans are healers first and foremost and devote their lives to its study. Yes, I want to learn healing arts. How many points? We have three skill points. So we have that now. And what we need is the actual heal skill. And we need more healing arts. Okay, I'll do another point into healing arts and another point into heal right now. I'm okay with that. I think that's good. Okay, this is something I should have done like a long time ago. Alright, so we're going to go back to the start of our party here. He's a warlord. Okay, and he is he our sword and board guy? We can go with weapon master, discipline, shield mastery, parry. I think I should probably. What is he using? What is his equipment? So this is something that I'm not a massive fan of right here. He, like, I'd like to be able to see, maybe it shows me some, oh, it does, it shows me down here. Okay, never mind, I, I take it back, I'm sorry. I was looking in the wrong area, I was, I was expecting to see over on this side where our equipment is, but it's in the bottom right corner, guys and gals. Uh, our main hand is a hand axe, our secondary is a buckler, we have a hemp bow. Okay, that, that's fine. I say, I, I was, for a minute there, I was not a big fan of how things were going. I'm like, eh, because, you know. I couldn't see what equipment we had, but we got it. Alright, I'm going to go with him being a sword and board person. Discipline Warlord, Master of Schwarzbrunn, Train, those selected to be Warlords at no cost. They accept worthy candidates, blah, 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 blah. Uh, four Rage loss per step. Oh, it reduces Rage Decay, okay. Increases block percentage with shields. We're going to learn that. Weapon throw. Throwing attack plus physical damage plus ra generate rage. Warlords often start battle by launching a thrown weapon at their enemies before charging forward to attack. Oh, that's pretty sick. Yeah, let's get that. I mean, I will definitely use him as a tank if that's a possibility for me. Oh, yeah, that's sick. I wonder if we have a thing to do that... Wait, we have combat... Like, I'm only looking at one thing. We have, like, combat skills, passive skills. I think those only come after we learn stuff, so we're, we're fine. Alright, and then here's me. Uh, ninjutsu... Kuji... What? Kujikiri? Sure, an assassin arts. Ambidextrous. Melee mastery. Ranged mastery. I sort of like the idea of being ambidextrous. I just want to see what that does. This is a damage penalty for dual wield fighting. Fighting with an offhand weapon can feel unnatural if you are not AMD dexterous. That's true. What is this? Uh, magical damage. Eh. Ninjutsu. Like, I, I don't... I feel like ninjutsu should include the, the dual wielding benefit. Or that being the dual wielding ninja master that he is, he shouldn't have a dual wielding penalty. But that's just me. Okay, that's fine. Um, bonus physical damage when target has ailment occurs. Uh, Ten physical damage dealt. And magic damage dealt. 
I increase agility, meditate on high mountaintops and feel the wind flowing around you. It's a passive technique. Oh, that's cool. You just get stab boosts here. That's all about magic. I think I'm going to go with the assassin arts. I think that's going to be what I'm going to do. I, I don't necessarily care if I get a tremendous amount of, like, skills. I'd like to get some, but I think I'm going to do a little bit of everything here. Increase critical power. All right, well, this is, again, a little bit a little bit off the, the beaten path here for what I was hoping to be able to accomplish. Yeah, we're just going to get it done right now. Bam, it is taken care of. We got stuff like Blood Reaper. Oh, I'm liking this. This looks cool. All right. And right now, all we have are passive tr uh, skills right now, so we don't even have to worry about throwing any special arts or anything in there, managing mana or focus or any of that stuff. So that's that's legit. Okay. And you're a Ronin, so essentially you're kind of like us. Um, I need to see what kind of items you're using. You're dual-wielding short swords. I think I'm going to move you to using a two-handed weapon. What are chains? Are samurai who have no master, the chains they wear symbolize their freedom. What? Interesting. I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm not reading all of these. I'm just kind of glancing over. Sword master. Opposed two-handed mastery. I think we can go into a, a couple different things. I think I'm going to go here and get a point into that. We don't have two-handed yet, so I'm not going to continue down that way. Bushido. Uh, death resist. 10% initiative. That's Bowmaster. Aikido. Evasion. Lots of passive stuff with these guys. Looks like the Master of Chains is going to be where we actually can start getting some of our skills. Okay, that's fine. Um, 100% random. Our chain represents the mastery of... And that requires 30 focus. Okay. Okay, so there we go. We're, we're mixing it up a little bit. I don't know if this is a smart move or a dumb move. It probably is dumb. I tend to do the worst possible conceivable things. It's kind of my, my, my gimmick that I do. Alright, you are an archer. I feel like archaeology and geology not going to be the help that we need. Um, fortune and glory. Okay, take Denari from enemies in chest, 5% more. Lash, okay, a bullwhip is an important adventuring tool for our, all archaeologists. Treasure Hunter, Locksmith. Increase the unlock skill of the party. Once a skill reserved to rogues and thieves. Modern archaeologists are handy with a lockpick as well. Unlock party skill raises one rank and it does not stack. That's interesting. Do we have other people who can do that? Hmm. Um, I think we're going to go down this path again, because I feel like it's kind of required aim shot. Okay. And that's as far as we've gotten. All right. You tell him, Jessica Regal. All right, and we got our healer, and finally our wizard. Dark sorcery, arcane studies, or elemental wizardry. I think we're going to go with elemental wizardry. Oftentimes I find those to be super fun. Oh, we can go whichever side we want. Uh, I'm going to go with ice. I tend to favor ice-based spells just a bit. Okay, there we go. Probably should get a little bit of each in case something's resistant to ice. Just moving forward. Could have been a, a smart move. I didn't go that route. And we're about out of time once again. But I'm going to I'm gonna stick it out a little bit longer, guys and gals. Like I wants to play this game, and I, I keep getting uh, keep getting shut down by time limits and time time restraints, and I'm not a I'm not a fan. I'd like to actually play a little bit more. So bear with me while we do that. All right, what do we have in here? Just a random room with well, not a lot. Oh, we're near an enemy. A random encounter is about to break out. If you look in the top right, you can see the orange circle. Thank you.
surrounding us. I'll gut you like a fish! Oh, this looks far more menacing than I was expecting. Okay. I mean, we have some skills. Basic attacks have a range. Attacking out of range will reduce damage. Yeah, I know. Skills use the bottom right resource bar for each player. New skills can be learned in the party menu. Okay. Consumable items can be used to heal, revive, or remove negative effects. Yeah. Defending will reduce damage that a player takes. 50% of upcoming combat. Okay. Turn. Contestants are powerful summons and team attacks. They utilize the empower meter on the far right side of the screen. Power meter charges up when the player deals damage, takes damage, or kills an enemy. The swap command causes a player in front and back row to swap places with a player in the front and behind them. Okay, that makes sense. Players on the left side are in the front row and they'll be targeted more often. Players on the right are in the back row and less often. Enemies in the front row can be struck by short range weapons in the player's front row without penalty. Enemies in the back row will take less damage from attacks unless you use a medium or long range attack. Okay. Okay, I think I've I think I've got it. Um, what do we have? We have weapon throw. Let's uh, start this off right. Yeah, I think we're gonna throw a weapon at this guy. I'm just a basic murder machine, so we're gonna do basic murder machine things. What do we have? Earth chainsword. Uh, yeah, sure. Skill aim shot. Uh. Sure, let's go after this guy. Uh, skill heal. We're gonna throw this on to you. And icicle. Ooh, using AOE skills. Some skills can change their targeting mode to target more players or enemies. Targeting a row doubles the mana cost of the skill. Targeting all players or enemies triples the mana cost. Changing the targeting mode will cause the skill to deal less damage or heal less life. I think I'm okay with just targeting a single. So we got the first attack there. Good shot. We took him out. We took that guy out. We took a chunk of damage there. I feel like we did way more attacks than what we should have done. I'm not complaining. But I felt like we did way more attacks. We'll do a bit of murder onto you. A little bit of murder onto you. We're going to switch over to you. Um, I'm afraid to use too much mana because I feel like it's just going to be a bad maneuver all around. But let's go ahead and heal her up. And you know what? I'm okay with shooting you. Come here, you. It feels real. Ah. We're just going to go all out on this. I still love the little hat with the arrow through. It's just, it's great. It's so good. All right, we got a small pelt, some metal scraps. We got a decent amount of uh, denarii, and I think we leveled. So that's cool. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's just about it. Let's go through here. I think there's probably going to be one of those things at the end of this hallway. I, I'm not sure. All right. Slowly getting closer and closer to fighting another baddie. Oh, there's a secret wall behind me. Hello, secret wall. That leads to another secret wall that leads back to the place where we were at before. Well, that's fine. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to break it off, right? Oh, it's a one-way wall. Oh, that's, that's nasty. All right. Fair play. I guess we'll do one more fight and then we'll break it off because... Everything dies. Eventually, yeah, uh, um, uh, we will end your suffering. Salvo? I, I, I'm not sure what happened. Sorry, stuff just started happening. We got the fire of Salvo before the battle started because of reasons. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do this again. Uh, each row, each front row player melee attacks a random enemy and then guard wall. Oh look, at he's all bloody. That's that's cool. I like that. We're gonna use a Kessen this time around as well. I mean, we haven't been really been utilizing it. I want to see if it will switch targets we will automatically. End your suffering. Oh yeah, we leveled. Uh, we when we leveled up, we healed to full. That dude's pretty strong, man. All right, we just murdered those guys. Just straight up annihilated them. Metal scraps, bent You're spear. You're welcome. I feel welcome. Thank you. 
Okay, we're not going to go through the false wall again. I just would like to find the end of this place. That's all. I'm not I'm not asking for a lot. At least I don't think I am. This is a very windy place. We're going to have a long time to get back to Aha. There are many magical portals throughout thing. the dungeon. Make sure that you are prepared before stepping through one. You have no idea where it may lead. That is true. That is very sound advice, Seraph, whatever your name is, Seraphine. Is there a way to save the game from here? I don't know, but that's okay. I think I'm going to record another episode immediately following this one, so that's fine. Anyway, I'm having a blast. Great game so far. I love everything about it. Uh, it started a little, I'm going to say it started a little slow, but I mean, there was a lot of backstory, kind of getting you into what's going on, explaining the world and stuff. So I'm okay with all that stuff. I just know it's not always the most exciting for like a Let's Play to have the first couple episodes kind of get just crushed by you know exposition and story and everything else so yeah super fun times i'm enjoying the dungeon crawling everything aspect. dies nothing matters who cares what happens captain cheerful is always you know bringing us up whenever we were feeling down and yeah so if you guys did enjoy go ahead and leave a like it does help a lot guys and gals so please go ahead and do so subscribe to the channel for more content like this and tons of other stuff and until the very next episode my name is bumpy mcsquiggums thank you for stopping by the freak show and i will See you later. <laughs>